Malaysia Airlines confirmed that this flight MH370 lost contact with Subang Air Traffic Control at 2.40 a.m. this morning. I contacted, contacted someone in Belgium. Uh, it's like a seismic um, organization that, that monitors earthquake activity. I did ask them, you know, is there any seismic activity in the Hale Vinch fracture zone? Because if you did manage to get it in there, you might find that you get it buried after a few years by, you know, rocks. So it might even be at the bottom of the sea covered. It was a convenient place. It's very long. Um, you could say, well, it's, you know, is he going to take exactly the right amount of fuel to ditch there? Well, it's hundreds of miles long. The Hellvinch fracture zone isn't a short feature. And so he can ditch halfway down it. Da, 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 da. Um, but he, we know that his simulator was simulating running out of fuel in the Southern Indian Ocean. But why was he doing that? Well, he was, he was finding out how far he could get. The other thing is that you don't want to bring a lot of fuel and then not use it because it's going to be creating an oil slip. Many years later, if you've got tons and tons of fuel in the aircraft and it's at the bottom of the hail vinch fracture zone, it still will be leaving a plume of um, sort of oily rainbow sort of residue on the surface for years. It's all part of it being planned meticulously uh, for Okay, how can I make it disappear? I don't want tons of fuel, but I do want to go as far as possible, so I have to have it running out about the right place. I don't want to crash. So the other thing is, you know, the, whether it crashes or it ditches. If you're of a motive to um, pick it, um, make it disappear, then there's only one solution which is to ditch it as neatly and as nicely as possible and it sinks to the bottom with all the people inside. He found that he, if he takes off on schedule, um, he'll get there in the dark and ditching in the dark is a disaster. So if you want to do a good ditching, you do it in daylight or at least half daylight. So in, in the case of MH370, it gets, starts getting light and if he's got another half an hour of fuel, he's in full daylight. It will be it will be dawn. The sun is just coming up above the horizon. If you want to say, why would you take the extra fuel? It does give me better range. It gives me better range. Another half an hour flying is another, it's going 488 knots. And what's the most important thing, it will be daylight. Do you think that the plane could essentially just be entombed at the bottom of the ocean with everyone still inside it. Yeah, I think that's exactly how it is. Lagi 
，本来我觉得我母亲不在飞机上，可能也可，但是是我确定的把她安在了这个飞机的乘客名单上。嗯，好像是我，是我害了她，一直现在有我这种，这种这种内疚的感觉，我现在始终是忘不掉。伤害多次的，一次一次的，二次伤害，给我们家属带来的打击跟压力太大了。内心的这种调整，只有自己能完成，只有自己通。十十年过去了，家属的目标、家属的初衷始终没有变化，只有一个：找到亲人，找到飞机，就这么就这么简单，从来没有变化过。经历过了之后，你才能感受我设身处地的去想。再因为现有的一些困难，但是我相信，只要态度变化了。中国政府对三七零的状态是以失踪作为官方结论的，这个也是家属认可和觉得是负责任的。但这种责任呢，就会给我们在清明节这一天造成我去祭拜我的母亲是不对的，因为她并没有死亡。但我不祭拜她，我不祭拜她呢，我又很想念她，又做不出什么。又没有办其他方法可以替代，所以就是那天就是如坐针毡，你去做也不对，不出去做也不对。等我刚才说每到清明节的时候，这种痛苦，但是我们就要承担的。事发了一,一两年之后，他有时候会提到奶奶，呃，因为奶奶原来经常去看他，嗯，但是他一提到奶奶的时候，那时候这个事情在最最神秘的一个阶段。嗯，我还心情还还不能像现在这么这么能够控制好，所以我就会经常的崩溃，躲到厕所里边，很长可能就不会出来。关键你怎么去自己去认识这个事情？你是能，你是生要见人，死要见尸。实际上，我觉得这句话也是很，它很朴素，它也很客观，就是我一定要有证据，我就接受。有什么样的证据我都可以接受，我有看到活着的人我也接受，看到真正能证明他不去的这个证据我也能接受，但是不能在任何没有证据的情况下，或者在只有孤证的情况下，而不是证据链的情况下，去决定一个让我自己去相信一个我最至亲至爱的亲人的生和死，这个是我觉得不能接受的。